In this tutorial, we will learn about two different techniques to use multiple materials for a single object. One is a simple and easy method, and then we have gradient shading. For this default cube, let us apply different materials on different faces. To do that, first go to the Materials tab. By default, we have one material already created for this. Let us change its color to something in red. Then add one more material in this index list. Create a new material, and change the color this time to green. And add yet another material, create new material, and change the color to a third color, blue. So, we have created three materials for this cube. Now, to apply them, go to the edit mode. First, turn on the face selection mode. Then, deselect everything, and select any one face. The red material is already selected, so just click on this assign button. To see the effect, turn on the rendered view mode. Do not worry if you see the entire cube turning red, we will change it. Select any other face this time, then select another material and click on assign. You can see that two different colors now appear for two different faces. Select any other face and in the same way, select the third material and assign. The three faces now have three different materials. Likewise, you can change other faces as well. Let us now go back to the object mode. This technique can be used where we want completely different colors on different sides of an object. But if we want one material to gradually change into another material, and create a smooth mix along the length or height of the object, we have to use a different and slightly complex method. Let us delete this cube, and then add a cylinder for this example on gradient shading. We will first convert its surface into a smooth surface. I have explained in details in another tutorial, how to create a smooth cylinder or cone. The link is in the video description. We will quickly wrap up this part here. Okay, so we want a gradient shading for this cylinder. It will have two different colors at two ends, and these materials will mix smoothly throughout its height. So, go to the Materials tab and create a new material. Then choose any color, say this shade of yellow. Now, we have to do the rest of the setup in the Shader Editor. So, split the screen into half. Let us resize it a bit. Then open the shader editor in the left side. A principal BSDF shader is added by default, let us make use of it. Press Shift D on your keyboard to duplicate this node. Then change its color to anything, maybe this green. Instead of this, you can use any other shader as well. We need to mix these two shaders. So add a mix shader node, and place it before the material output. Then connect the two BSDF nodes to this mix node, it will mix them in equal proportion. But we do not want to just mix them together, we want these two colors to mix in a variable proportion. It should change over the height of our cylinder. So we need to access the coordinates of our objects, or the location of each point on the cylinder, and based on that location, change this FAC value of the mix node. It is not really difficult, we just need to set up some additional nodes. The first node that we need is, a texture coordinate node. Then we need to separate out the coordinate for the height. So, add one separate XYZ node. Now connect the object output to this node. It will basically split the coordinates into three different components, but we cannot use this Z value directly. We need to convert it using one more node from the converter group, a map range. Connect the Z input to this node. The Z value for any object varies from minus 1 to plus 1, so the first two fields here will be minus 1 and plus 1, and the output range will be 0 to 1, which we can then use in the mix shader, as the FAC input. It is as easy as that. The result is quite nice. The cylinder has one particular color at the bottom, which gradually changes over to the other color at the top. A smooth mixing of materials. If you select the X or Y input in place of Z, we get a different kind of shading. Now, the left and right parts have two different colors, and it mixes in the middle. You can also control the width of this changeover. You can design a more sudden change or a flat change at the border of these two. Let us do that. First, add one clamp node and place it after the map range node to clamp its output. Now go to Add, then Input, and add a value node. Then, from the Converter group, also add a Math node. Change the type to Multiply. 
Connect the value node to the first value, and enter minus 1 in the second value. We are basically inverting our value node through this. Now select this node and press Shift D to duplicate it. Connect the value node here. Change the type to add, and in the second value field, enter 1. We have inverted the value field in the first node, and increased it by 1 in the second. They will become the new range for our map range node. Now, simply through this value node, we can control the bandwidth of the color mix. By changing its value, we can get a wide, or a narrow border, the range where the two colors overlap. If we make it very high, we get almost a single line with a sharp change, whereas lower values will spread the mix and make it flatter. Select a value that suits your requirement, and you are done. We can use a similar approach to mix two materials for any object. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.